Welcome to the Two Matt and a Jeff podcast. I'm Matt Moyer along with Matt Bannon and Jeff Moyer. And uh, we are just a couple of average Joes talking sports here. And today we're going to give our top five or top six or seven, whatever it may be, quarterbacks in the history of the Philadelphia Eagles. So we're looking at our Philadelphia Eagles top quarterbacks. Uh, Jeff, you want to get us started with your uh, number five? Sure. My number five, I went with uh, Norm Van Brocklin. Um, Norm Van Brocklin is a Hall of Famer um, in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He was a nine-time Pro Bowler. He threw for 7,000, over 7,000 yards, uh, 55 touchdowns. He had a lot of interceptions, 51 interceptions, but he was the quarterback for our Eagles for the 1960 uh, champs. So um, I have Norm Van Brocklin, and looking actually on others kind of lists and stuff, he was... Uh, actually listed as the overall number 25th overall quarterback in the NFL on NFL.com. So I was a little surprised. I'm like, okay. So my number five is Norman Brockle. All right. Well, I'm going to start out here with number five is Nick Foles. Number five. Now that, that you know, I, I, a part of me wanted to put him on the list because, you know, of what he did for us with winning the Super Bowl. And uh, part of me wanted to not put him on the list. And then I started looking at all the numbers, and I, I just couldn't help, you know, but put him on the list, even though his body of work was not great. But you look at what he did, um, highest passer rating, highest single season passer, uh, ninth in franchise history in yards, eighth in touchdowns, uh, lowest interceptions for the seasons, uh, most yards in a game, most touchdowns in a game. He holds a lot of team records and things. So we're just looking at the Philadelphia Eagles. Nick Foles, of course, we know the Philly special and, and, and all that. He's the only guy to, to ever, uh, I think, throw and receive uh, a touchdown pass in the Super Bowl. Um, so that's where I have Nick Foles. All right. Well, my number five, you guys are both going to be surprised at probably, is Carson Wentz. And Ooh. the main reason I have him as number five is because the Birds don't win their Super Bowl without Carson Wentz. I mean, I know he was they don't not. Get the, to it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. They don't get to the Super Bowl that year. Um, guy has a 63% completion percentage, even as of now. Um, as in, uh, how many years? 16 and now, what, four years or whatever. Now, I know the game's different or whatever. But he has 16, almost 17,000 yards passing, um, 113 TDs, 50 interceptions. Um, this year, when we start, as Jeff had mentioned, I believe on his last episode or this one, we started these lists earlier. His record was way better, obviously, when we started these, and it was not way better, but it's better. Um, 0 1 to playoffs, which is not good. Um, but I wrote down, you know, he would have been an all pro. He was an all pro in 17, and just, I think he would have been the MVP if he didn't get hurt. Um, I just wrote down that he just lost it. Uh, I think last year really hurt him. Because he had to be Superman last year with everything going on at the end to get in the playoffs, and I think he which just, he was. I mean, well, yeah, yeah, he yeah, was. No, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm not saying he no, wasn't. No, I'm no. just saying he had to be right. to be able to get the birds there. And now I think starting the very beginning of the season through whenever he got pulled or whatever, I think he just he felt like he still had to be Superman, and that didn't it didn't work. So I mean, for me, I just it's a it's a small sample size or whatever, but. As, as I did with the coaches one, because um, I think I had Peterson higher than you guys or whatever. I just, the, the Super Bowl, I mean, the Eagles fan base was dying for a Super Bowl. And again, had not although he wasn't the quarterback, and maybe they don't win it if he doesn't get hurt or whatever, but you don't know, maybe he does, but they don't even get close to getting there with Nick Foles right. in a full season, as was been proven. Sure. I was going to say, well, before I do my five, I'll, yeah. I'll just comment on yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually had both of them as honorable mentions. Uh, like Nick Foles and Carson Wentz. Um, I think, you know, you mentioned a lot of stuff with the Carson Wentz, and Nick Foles' thing was just for me, he just didn't play a lot of games, really, for the small and, season. And, you know, I, I, know, I know this is just the Eagles, so that's why you have him, but, like, you know, if, if he's not on the Eagles, he stinks. Like, you know, like, you know that's, you well, know, I mean, like, basically, yeah, I mean, I, he got benched, you know, now he's in Chicago and got benched. Like, right. he got benched in Jacksonville, you know, like, just... Yeah. Interesting how he yeah. plays all of a sudden it, good. It's just all those individual things, you know, put him on my list. Right, Van, no. Van Brocklin, who you had at five, was my an honorable mention for me. Because I felt like, you know, I needed to include him as an honorable mention. Uh, yep. No, but but nowhere else. But interesting choice, Matt, for okay. sure. But for, for me, for, for Nick Foles, um, 
for any all of these quarterbacks. I didn't and I didn't take into account what they did either before they came to Philadelphia right. or after they left Philadelphia. I just took into account right. Phil- what they did for Philadelphia. In yeah. Philly. Yeah. I think that's a solid yeah. way to look at yeah. it, too, because yeah. you get into that, it gets into a whole other, yeah. you know, realm of things, right. depending, you know. Right. Well, if you guys watched our other podcast about the Eagles with their coaches, um, this is the only reason I know about this guy, my number four guy, is because of looking up with different things from the early, you know, this guy played from 41 to 1950, mm-hmm. and Tommy Thompson uh, is my number four. Uh, 90, 90 touchdowns, but 100 interceptions. Uh, but he threw for over 10,000 yards. Again, he was the, the quarterback for the championship teams of 48 49, and he, was, uh, he had one Pro Bowl. So uh, that's why I, I put him at number four. I put him at number four, too. But a couple of pieces that you missed that are interesting is he had two years off for serving in the Army during the war because wow. he was there from 41 to 50. So two years he was in the Army that he missed. And he could only see out of one eye. I didn't know After that. he served or the whole time? I, I, I think it was the whole time. Now, going back, it's been a while since I wow. did my list, but you only see out of one eye. What they said about him was he was a great game manager. That was his, his thing. Maybe but, back then was – maybe that was better than yeah. what they're saying. Yeah, yeah but well, it's, it's, you know, yeah. probably this – probably the forward pass wasn't as much. You no, know, that's the interceptions. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they probably might even ran the back in those days, the single wing or mm-hmm. whatever, which my dad had told me about. <laughs> Two and a uh, – NFC champs yeah. in uh, or, yeah, yeah the 48 49, 49. Yeah. he lost in 47 so uh but thir- 43 and 44 he was in the army at war wow. during the during part of those years so anyway uh agree with you on that again a guy I wouldn't have known much about cuz no. he s- played long before I was born yeah. he too yeah <laughs> even long before Matt was born yeah. so there you go yeah. all right so my number 4 is and I don't get it might be on your guys' list or maybe he is I don't know Randall Cunningham. Um, he played for the Birds from '85 to '95, 589 winner percentage, only one and four in the playoffs. Again, the Fog Bowl um, in Chicago that, that didn't help, I'm sure. Um, 56 uh, percent completion percentage, almost 23,000 yards through four for the. I, that, I didn't realize that he threw that much that he would accumulate even that time that the ten right. years that he would accumulate that many yards. 150 TDs, 105 interceptions. I put down that um, he was sort of, so Randall was sort of the first dual threat quarterback before they even talked about having a dual threat quarterback like Michael Vick, everyone thinks he is, but Randall ran a lot. Um, there's that play against the Giants back they always show where he rolls out to the side, sort of gets doubled over, tackled, and throws a touchdown pass, I believe. Um, you know, they had gang, he had Grand Green defense as a luxury, um, and their offense really lacked um, when, when he was there. Um, I, I looked. I didn't know this. Apparently, there's an award called the Burt Bell Award, which is Player of the Year, which I guess is, is not MVP, but he won that in '88 and '90, which I had no idea. Um, and then he was an All Pro later in his career for Minnesota. Again, we don't. Yeah. That's not oh, yeah. the Burrs, well, but you know, he, he did do well later. So. He definitely did. Yeah. yeah. Well, my number three is another beloved guy from this area for sure, with Philadelphia Eagles fans. That's Ron Jaworski. I have an up three. Um, he was here from 1977 to 1986. Um, he, uh, his postseason record was only four and four. He threw for over 26,000 yards, 170 touchdowns. Uh, he was the quarterback who lost in the Super Bowl to the Raiders. Um, you know, the one thing I read a lot, you know, different things that he was a very durable quarterback. Um, and, uh, he was in one Pro Bowl, um, but you know, around here especially, you know, and actually nationally, because of how well he's, you know, he uh, does with quarterbacks, and talks about just in general about all quarterbacks. Um, but again, you know, Ron Jaworski, you know, a lot of people love Jaworski, and I, you know, definitely had to have him up on my list. Yeah. Well, my number three is the same as you, Randall Cunningham. Um, so I'll repeat all of the stuff you said. I think you know, uh, the '92 playoff win, which is after a 12-year drought, it was their first uh, playoff win. Um, you know, I think, you know, the 32 rushing touchdowns. So yeah. I was surprised as well with how much passing, um, considering he didn't have a whole lot of great guys to pass to. Right. You know, Buddy Ryan was known for his defense. He wasn't known for putting together a, a good offensive part of the team. But, you know, Randall Cunningham, I think, was um, an outstanding quarterback for, for, the, for the Eagles. And, you know, he was that guy who could make things happen special. Yeah. You know, like you mentioned, he you know, almost falls down, gets back up. But, so he was... 
uh, definitely a, a big threat with his arm because he had a great arm mm -hmm. yeah. as well. And he did some other things. Um, he did do uh, did he do some some punting I believe as well uh -huh. as well. Did he really? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Wow. yeah. So he was he was definitely a multi talented athlete. So Randall Cunningham was my number three. I won't repeat all the stuff you said good about him. All right. So let's see. My number three because you started. Yes, last I did. Yeah. So my number three was Jaws. Ron Jaworski. Um, 77 to 86, you get all the numbers here, uh, you know, Jaws or the Polish rifle, you know, all the, all the Polish people out there, the ethnic people, uh, whatever, love him for that. Um, and I put down, like, he's loved for getting the burst to their, really, their first Super Bowl. Um, and, and again, his toughness, he got, I looked up how many, I forget, I didn't write down, but he got sacked a lot. So just the fact that he, and he played like, I forget that stretch in uh, you know around Super Bowl to the early mid '80s. He played like what, 16 games a lot, like which is unheard of right. anymore, really, as especially as a quarterback. Um, and he also won the Burt Bell Award in 1980, which I didn't know this award existed <laughs> until we started looking at some. And you mentioned the one Pro Bowl, so yeah, yeah, Jaws is my number. And he came from a small college, or so smaller, smaller college. Yeah. All right, so my number two is Randall Cunningham. Um, again, 85 to 95. Um, he was 23 and six in the playoffs, over 22,000 yards. He had he made four Pro Bowls. One he was one All, all Pro. Um, you mentioned the 32 touchdowns. When you talked about the punt, he actually has the longest punt in Eagles history of 91 yards. Really? Yes. He's got the longest wow. punt in Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles history of 91 yards. No one would ever get that. Detroit. Right. <laughs> um, I always remember too that he. You know, he had a, that big arm, but it almost seemed like he, he took forever like to yes. throw the ball. You yes. know, his motion. Yes, yes. it was almost the like long, a pitcher. Elongated yes. motion, yes. Yes, but again, the, yeah, the dual threat, everybody can remember. Like, um, yeah, I think, too, if, you know, we talk about the coaches, if he had a different coach as far as offensively, who knows? I mean, yeah. but, yeah. Yes. Right. So my number two was Jaworski. So we can, you know, kind of flip-flopping those mm -hmm. guys around a little bit between us. Uh, but, I, you know, I felt like he was a little bit better than – than Cunningham with his body of work and getting to, you know, a Super Bowl loss, but still getting there. So, you know, playoff-wise and durability, uh, 26,000 yards. Uh, uh, he had 170 touchdowns. I think that's a team record. I think that's what I have written down there. Um, so, uh, and uh, Hall of Fame for the Eagles in 1992. Uh, so, Ron Jaworski, number two for me. My number two, you guys are probably going to laugh or whatever, but my number two is Nick Foles. Whoa! Again, as, as if you watched our coaches podcast, Eagles coaches podcast, I took into account a huge, the fact that the Birds went without a Super Bowl win for so long, and he delivered it. Even though he wasn't the quarterback most of the season, he's the one who was on the field when the confetti fell. So, well, he played wow. really, really well during that time. I thought I had the him playoff, ranked high at five. The playoff run, I mean, he played except for the first quarter or whatever of the first game of the playoffs. And actually, well, go ahead. I don't want to take That's okay. No, no, no. Well, I was going to say, the other thing is, so we're hearing, you know, because we, we talked about coaches last time, supposedly Nick Foles, the one who came over to Peterson and said, let's run the Philly Philly. Oh, yeah, that's oh, yeah. yeah, the Philly special. So, right. you know, when we talk about the coaches, who knows? I mean, right, but, but <laughs> you know, Peterson had to say, yes, yeah, yes, Nick, yeah. Nick did bring it up, right. which is a gutsy move. Right, well, that's that's what, that's what I have down. That then we'll take your thunder, thunder sorry. But that, no, no, that's okay, that's okay. But that is his suggestion. You hear, they had, you know, NFL Films has everything. And they after the Super Bowl, it was Nick Foles' suggestion when he came over or whatever. You know, I mean, the, the body of work is small or whatever, and everyone thinks, oh, just the playoffs or just that season that they won the Super Bowl. But, I mean, even though it's a small body of work, his winning percentage was 656 with the birds. With the birds. Right. And that's, again, that we yeah. talked about briefly before. I'm not taking into account how poorly he did yeah. with the Jaguars and the Bears. It's just what he did with the birds. Even when he was with Andy Reid. I mean, when he was with Andy Reid, he made the Pro Bowl, I think, that year, and he had his, his TD interception was 27 TDs, to two INTs that year that he made the Pro Bowl. And that year he had a seven TD game. You remember that? Against yes. the Raiders in Oakland. Well, yeah, it's a record. I highlighted that mm -hmm. on my, but at five, which yeah. again, I thought was pretty high right. for him. Right. Not two, but. So, but I wrote down in my biggest thing I write down in red and whatever it is beloved. You know, even though he's, he's been, got a statue. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, he will forever be like, you know, he has people buy his book, you know, whatever. Like, I'm telling you, like, it, it, he's may not, from like, Again, I think even in basketball stuff, podcasts that we've done, like winning to me was a bigger thing when we talked about like Bill Russell and things in basketball once. So, 
you know, I, I just thought, you know, if I thought of Eagles fans, you know, from not from a stat perspective, but even still in that small percentage for the stat perspective, yeah, right. I just had him. But in the biggest uh, game, on the biggest stage, at the most important position, right. he delivered right. incredibly. So you, know, you can't take that away from him. Right. No matter who got us there, you know. Right, true. Right. Once he got there, he delivered, which is not an easy thing to do. Against Tom Brady. Yes. 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 Cheaters. Yeah. <laughs> well, not that too. Well, they're pretty much cheaters all the time. Yeah. But anyway. All right, so I'm going to do my number one, which I've got to imagine now is both of yours because he hasn't been said. Um, it's number five, we'll always love you. <laughs> uh, Donovan McNabb has uh, here for 10 years. Uh, really great record, 92 wins, 49 win, 49 losses, one tie that didn't know you could tie. Uh, um, his postseason record, not all that great, you know, with nine wins, seven losses. Uh, but, again, five NFC Championship games. He made it to the one Super Bowl. Threw up in it, but apparently, hey, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, over 32,000 yards, 250, 215 touchdowns. He ran for 3,000 yards. Um, and 28 touchdowns were running. Um, I have him again. You probably we can you know regurgitate all this again, but yeah, I have him. He has number. He's number one in wins for quarterbacks, pass attempts, completions, passing touchdowns, most touchdowns uh, as well. And he was a six-time Pro Bowler. And I think it's going to be interesting to see if he makes the Hall of Fame or not. He's yeah. you know, he's borderline. Yeah. So I agree, Donovan McNabb. Uh, Best quarterback in franchise history for the Philadelphia Eagles. Hands down, I don't think that there's even, to me, there's no discussion between the other guys that we have on the list. I mean, I don't think you can put a Ron Jaworski ahead of him. I don't think you can put a Randall Cunningham ahead of him. Maybe some old dude would put Tommy Thompson <laughs> ahead of him or, uh, you know, Norm Van Brocklin, maybe. But to me, the body of work is there. I said it at the time. It's another prime example of a guy in Philadelphia who Philadelphia fans, you know, are fickle. And he never got as much credit as I think he deserved, you know, on the, if you listen to, you know, sports talk radio around Philly, um, you know, he did and said some dumb stuff sometimes that, did, that, you know, people didn't appreciate. But in the franchise history, the numbers you all said, they all support him being the best quarterback in, in the franchise history. And, you know, uh, you know, he got us a lot of, a lot of playoff wins, got us to the, to the big game. He couldn't, he couldn't win. The guy only had a number one receiver when he had Terrell Owens, and that's it. You know, he never, I mean, James Thrash, wasn't he throwing the James Stinks, Thrash? Stinks, Stinks, you know, Tom, 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 <laughs> like, he had nobody to throw to. And he could throw a little bit, and he could run a little bit. He had, a, you know, a little bit of everything. So, uh, to me, hands down, you, you know, I, I can't see how anyone could pick anyone different. Uh, his body work, his numbers all support it. And unfortunately, uh, like Andy Reid in the, in the uh, coach talk, People in Philadelphia don't appreciate how good he really was. I think nationally they do, but I agree. Borderline Hall of Famer, toss up, maybe, maybe not. You know, we'll see. I don't think he's a. He's definitely not a shoe in, but he could. Right. Has he been on the ballot? I mean, after how many years he's been out? So I mean, I don't. I don't, know. Know. I don't think he's I, been on the ballot. I don't yet. think he would. Yeah. I would think we would have heard. Right. I think. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So my number one, obviously, is Donovan McNabb. Um, I don't know what else to say. Let's see here. Um, for me, one of the things that sticks in my mind, and this is the Philadelphia critical part of, of me or whatever, he just missed too many wide open short throws. He'd always throw it at the guy's feet on like a screen or whatever, and not not on purpose, like, you know, just too many wide. Now, again, he didn't have receivers that could separate and everything, um, but, you know, just uh, his longevity is why he's number one and, and the stats that he can, and the fact that even though he didn't win the big one, I mean, getting to that many consecutive and he, was, and he said he was significant to get you know, Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, well, they don't get you know, right. even close right. again because we talked about no receivers. And the one year that they gave him a good weapon, throw yeah. to, yeah. was yeah. the they, year they, they got, got there. there. So, and I think after he did throw up, which I wrote about or whatever as well, I believe he threw a touchdown pass after that. So, right. you know, give. Get all uh, the, the jitters out. Yeah. And There's a lot of talk about that and, and lots of different – I just saw the other day another possible story from T.O. about why he threw up, and I forget exactly what it was, but – I'll say this. So the guy threw up in the big yeah, game. For whatever true. reason he did, he threw up, and then he threw a touchdown pass. Right. So, listen, who among us? If you go yeah. puke, you're probably laying down. You're probably not playing the biggest game of your life. So I don't know why he puked well, either. Yeah. Uh, we love to make a lot about that around the yeah, ball. Yeah, and yeah. honestly, what, whatever year two, when he, remember he broke his leg and still kept playing on it. Yeah. You know, that one. You know, So, yeah, his toughness, I think, was there. I think one of the reasons he threw it leg feet, too, is – 
I don't think he took as many chances. Like I think they always said, like that's why his interception rate was lower because yeah, I was just gonna say he didn't have as many interceptions. Mm -hmm. And, and I, one thing, a couple things I wrote down yet um, is that he was pretty reserved. Usually your quarterback is a leader, and you know, I mean, Tom Brady's reserved as well. He's not whatever, but I think that was you know when To came around, and was, eventually always, that sort of that relationship sort of soured or whatever because I think that you know that Donovan just didn't stand up for the locker room stuff talk and everything. He didn't stand up for himself or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, let's see else, what I wrote down here. And I, th I wrote down that he wanted to be, like Nick Foles, we, I talked about earlier, is beloved. It always will be in Philadelphia. McNabb, like you talked about, five, oh, we'll always mm -hmm. love you. He wanted to be beloved, but that connection, like you mentioned too, Matt, that connection to Philadelphia and the fans just never... I don't know if his personality or whatever it was just wasn't there. But I do think you're right that, you know, now that he's gone and we, you know, we go from quarterback to quarterback, although Nick Foles took us to the promised land or whatever, and Wentz is struggling now, and we'll see what Jalen Hurts can apparently do or whatever. But, you know, you know, he, the longevity, he was, the, he was quarterback and took us far for a lot of years. So underappreciated. Yeah, underappreciated. He didn't have... This, the, the personality, for whatever reason, didn't jive with right. Philadelphia fans that he's not beloved. Right. But he really should be, yeah. you know, in my opinion. He should be because his body of work substantiates that. All the years here, but he just never connected. You know, Philadelphia's a blue-collar town. They love the right. Nick Foles kind of story. Right. And Donovan McNabb just would occasionally say dumb stuff that – uh, people around Philadelphia didn't appreciate it. And when he left Philadelphia, he kept doing that. Right. Um, and it just, you know, despite his best effort, I think you're right, Mike. He, like, wanted to, still wants probably to be yeah. beloved yeah. in Philadelphia. And for me, you know, I I, I think he deserves that. But, right. you know, ne you're never going to get it at this point. No. Unless something uh, substantial happens. But yeah. there you have it. There's our list of the top quarterbacks of all time for the Philadelphia Eagles, our, our own uh, hometown Philadelphia Eagles. You've been listening to and watching the uh, Two Mats and a Jeff podcast. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, Two Mats and a Jeff podcast. We'll see you next time.